I am back and I got Mr. Photogrammetry with me. <laughs> uh, coming to you live today from Deep Dive Dubai, we've got John Kendall. As I said, he's a man who's become literally synonymous with photogrammetry within our community. Uh, John, thanks for coming Hi. on the channel. No problem. Could you give me an idea of how you see photogrammetry maybe evolving as an art form? Yes. So I think one of the nice things about photogrammetry is once you have a model, once you have a 3D model, you can kind of do anything you like with it. So we all know that taking a beautiful photo on water involves lining everything up, right. lining up the background, lining up the photographer, lining up the models, maybe lining up the fish. Very hard to do. But getting everything right and then getting the lighting right. And then, so that's, that's really hard and you've got to capture it in that moment underwater. Right. The nice thing about photogrammetry is we can have the model, we build the model. It could be scientific basis, there could be a, an archaeological reason for doing it. But then, once that model exists, we have the ability to do stuff with it. So we can bring it in, we can add lighting, we can add dynamics, we can change the colours, we can... So in its own right, we can add some more artistic to it. So we can take science, we can take the engineering, and then we can Make bring it back pretty. in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, once we do that, we've made science pretty, as you say, yeah. which I think you should trademark as a sentence. <laughs> like, what then? Like, what, what would one do be with this beyond sort of just, like, project mapping? Yeah. Uh, what are we going to do? What do you want to do? That's the, that, that's the nice thing about this. We have a thing. Mm -hmm. We can then develop with it. We can do stuff with it. So, we all know that it could be very useful for an archaeological perspective. We can yeah. measure stuff. We can do all the science stuff. Great. But we can share it with the world. You know, community. Bring it out to the community. Let's look at a perfect example of the Mars wreck. The most protected wreck in the Baltic. Statistically, nobody is allowed to dive there. Right. Just, you know, it's, except, it's like, except well, and the team. <laughs> and the team, big team. Not, um, but yeah, even then, we get a license once a year to go and do a couple of weeks of projects. Anyone can visit it virtually. Anyone can visit it through the digital media. So this is a really cool thing, is yeah. that we can share stuff around the world. Yeah, there's other sites, um, the stuff in Lipari, the stuff out in Agadi, the Battle of Agadi that Mario and the team have been doing. There's a lot of stuff. And if you go to the museum in Palermo, you can see some of the things that they've done. But that requires getting on a plane from wherever you are, unless you live in Palermo, and then going to the museum and then you see it. But again, because we've bought some of the stuff online, we've bought it digitally, we can share it with the world. And that's the really cool thing, is it opens up sharing of knowledge, sharing of technology, and sharing of history with people that wouldn't necessarily get to see it or understand it mm. if they had to go diving. Let's take it up a level. We've talked about making science pretty. We've talked yeah. about sharing. How do you actually see this science slash art form becoming a bit more mainstream? It's a good question, actually. What I've seen over the last year, year and a half, is more and more people going to their own local dive sites and starting to develop a bit themselves. Um, so we're seeing more people who wouldn't traditionally have gone down this route because right. you know it's a bit narrow, it's a bit geeky, it's a bit it's techy, you know, it's techy. Yeah. Um, but they're now trying it and they're playing with it. And mm -hmm. you know most of them will give up, but some of them are going. Actually, you know what? This is kind of cool. We'll, yeah. we'll stick with that. We'll try it. So what I'm loving is seeing more stuff out there. Yeah. You know, and I'm seeing people developing new techniques and stuff that they that you know beyond what we've put out there and beyond what we're doing and I can means that I can then look at other people and go how are they doing that actually you know what we tried that and didn't get great results but I can see that you're getting results from it what are you doing differently yeah, and right. you know, starting that conversation and with you know, you said in your presentation, which will be available on GUE TV, by the way, you said that breaking it down to its lowest common denominator, it's photos. Many, 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 many photos. Even if you're working with artificial night, especially underwater, yeah. there's so many variables. Do you think the camera manufacturers, like the big players in the industry, are going to start paying more attention to photogrammetry and maybe implore, uh, uh, you know, use some software or even maybe uh, make some hardware that'll make it easier for you? I would love that to be the case. Is um, it possible? There are, there are certainly things that would make our lives easier. What I do know, though, is the top side photography there's a lot of people doing that and they don't really need any development so you know things like the little consumer level dji drones you can pre-program it you can yep. hit the button it can go up and take all the photos you need with a bit of knowledge not a lot of knowledge but with a bit of knowledge you can get some pretty good external models you then go and take a few photos with a with a decent slr and you can fill in some of the gaps and you get some really lovely stuff and i've seen this but most of the top side stuff they're working in hundreds of photos like three to four hundred photos underwater on an average dive we're looking at three thousand photos there you go. Per dive. <laughs> so we're taking a lot of shots very quickly it's all about the quality of the images we can get how sharp we can get right images. so they're, they're not only a lot of yeah. images it's a lot of um, uh, high but you know they're yeah, big file size big files yeah. stuff that i would love to see from camera manufacturers and it's starting already you know i'm looking at things like the canon eos uh, r5 it's now mirrorless but full frame 8k video in yeah. there all this kind of cool stuff so there's stuff coming down the line yeah but it's very expensive certainly putting an r5c in the housing that's a big 
was it yeah. um, <laughs> right. The other thing that I've seen, uh, excuse me for just using Canon here, I'm a Canon man. They've, they, they yeah, the Canon bought out a 3D lens. Oh my God! Oh. So for the R5, they bought out a lens with a beam splitter in yeah. it. Now, I don't think the physics would work to enable us to use that to a dome port. You'd like it to though, I would love you? it. And if someone, wants, <laughs> if someone wants to yeah, send one to me to test, yeah, I need the, the R5 as well as the, the lens. But yeah, feel free to send it over. And then I will make, I will come up with a way of making it work on the water. I'll talk. Sure. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Look, John's done a full presentation here at Deep Dive Dubai. That presentation will be available on GUE TV. So if you're not subscribed already, go check that out. And if you're new to the channel, you're interested in photogrammetry, keep it right here. Global Underwater Explorers right here on YouTube. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you very soon. Thanks, John. No problems.